She's so smart, Good girl. isn't she? Yeah, that's why I'm pushing her because I know she's capable of it. Like there are definitely other dogs that I wouldn't be going to that level straight away, mm. but I know she is capable of just, and because the main focus for her is I want her to process that intense feeling that she's having, whether it be the separation anxiety or whether it be, um, you know, whatever is going on there. <laughs> FOMO, you know, I'm isolated, you're out there, I want to be with you, whatever it is, I want all those feelings and emotions to her start to control them. And that's what's gonna give her the best um, tools in life to not have to impulsively use those teeth. You know, and this is where it all starts, this kind of behavior, controlling that composure, staying calm, and then we're gonna be able to achieve all those real issues later on. Yeah. Good girl, well done. Well done this way, come on, good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Good girl. Good girl. They definitely don't start anticipating the boundary, i.e. the environment here, until the next stage. So, she's very advanced. Good girl, darling, good girl. Three, yeah, good job, good job. Well done, good girl. It has a lot to do with the instinct to want to give you that eye contact, calculate your body language, what is, what's going on. There's a lot of natural, what are we doing? You know, what are you doing? How are you doing it? What does that mean? She's got that eagerness to learn. Uh, she, she wants to figure it out. She wants to understand me. And that's what is really working in her favor as far as how advanced she is and how quickly she's coming along. Uh, so what's today? Today is Wednesday. So this is beginning of day three. Um, you know, usually the dogs don't stop there or she started slowing down, you know, before she got there, reading the environment, reading that boundary, that threshold. They don't usually do that uh, until, you know, we get to the uh, level three boundaries and they've already been corrected maybe 17 times by that stage brought back to that point and they start to figure out hey it's something to do with this here you saw how many was that it was probably three or four plus one you know mm. and she's a puppy puppies are usually oh, much worse yeah. you know, they, they just keep going keep going keep going you got to have real a lot of patience when working with puppies because you just you're working at their speed and mm. it is rather slow so i am very impressed with how she's going she's behaving like a fully mature dog would do um you know with full mental capability so she's so intelligent and she wants to learn and train mm -hmm. all the time, all the time. like 24 yeah. seven. That's what it feels like, doesn't it? it Even it when we're in the backyard relaxing with the kids, she's still looking at you as to what can I learn? What can I do? Yeah. Um, so, so, so that's a positive, positive like for what we're doing here. But I can see how that would just be her unfolding if she didn't have an owner. It could be very draining if it didn't come naturally to you to interact with her in a way that constantly gives her information. So there's that, like a, the pressure um, and workload that an owner requires to have a dog like this. But and honestly, a lot of people just wouldn't um, put in that time. And so then what I'm, what I'm saying is, we're seeing it as a positive, it's a great thing, yeah. but it's it can definitely be a negative in the wrong environment. It's, so it, she, it she would become a destructive, yeah, you so know? Yeah, it can definitely become a negative, and it becomes a negative when those tiny interactions, like after we finished yesterday, we came outside with the girls uh, and Wolfie, and we had her uh, running around the backyard, and I was watching her, and she's really on point with my signals and I'm giving her minimal signals and giving her minimal verbal commands and she's responding to every single one of them. So I'm like, okay, I can I can start influencing her already, which we usually don't do until after they've done the basics. So 
that's why I pushed her straight away. This is the first real boundary she's done, and it's a relatively difficult Basi one. Basics, like um, when you're teaching a client, that's about four, four to six weeks worth of yeah. work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's she's right. done that in two days. She's, she's really <laughs> punching through. But the thing is, even yesterday when we weren't officially training, she still learned so much based on little cues where she would just mouth snap a dog and then look back at me and I go, ah, you know, and I'm using stuff that I don't usually use like the uh-uh and, and little, little noises, little things that she's just responding to, you know, and she's picking up. And so it is very effective if you know what you're doing and you um, are, are feeding her the information when she's looking for it because she's constantly looking for it. You know, you, uh, uh, whenever she's around, I'm never switching off because she's constantly looking for me and I'm recognizing that face saying, what do I do here? What do I do here? How do I do this? And so I'm constantly just feeding her the information as she requires it. Whereas a lot of the time you're fighting for the dog's attention to then teach them something. Uh, so this is where if you don't recognize that and you don't give her the information that she need and you go blank or you ignore her, she may just decide that this is what I want to do and it's the wrong thing. Mm. And then you've got to try and untrain that and then retrain the right way so this is where you've got to stay on your toes for the first few weeks just the all day every day is she's feeding up you yeah they start to lose respect for you yeah so, so I'm, I... I'm all about earning the respect at the moment with the with these dogs or when they first come on and then once you've got the respect you need to maintain it so yeah exactly if they're just getting nothing from you they go oh, i'll get it from someone else and they'll probably start following someone like roscoe or freddo mm. and taking cues from them because they're the ones that will be giving them information saying hey don't do this hey you're, you're mm. being a pest over here you know and so they'll start feeding off them somebody commented on yep. one of the videos saying um that won't roscoe's mouthing play because yeah. that's his thing he loves doing it with you with wrestling yeah. <laughs> um won't that behavior influence a dog especially like abra who has um you know that biting instinct mm. um you know from her um lineage not just breed but we're also talking yeah. her parents specifically um won't that be a bad influence on a dog like Abra. Um, it, now it's got potential to be. Yep. It, it's possible that um, that could be the case. In this case, it's not the case because she's only very new to this environment. I'm the one at the moment who has the full relationship with her, and she's just interacting with the other dogs in a way of desensitising being around bigger dogs. So she hasn't gravitated towards. Uh, I like this dog, you know, I'm idolizing you, I'm following you, whatever you do, I do. She's doing that to me. So when yesterday I did this game with Roscoe. Yeah, so we have a video, you'll, you'll you see it. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it. So I was doing the standard thing, wrestling with Roscoe, he's biting my arms, I'm pretending to be hurt and he's got me. <laughs> uh, but then Abra was definitely watching and absorbing and taking everything in, but she took it for what I was acting. And that was Roscoe's attacking me and he's got my arm. So then she started to defend me and protect me and started to flash up towards Roscoe. Now, a dog that small who is already intimidated by the bigger dogs because she's had minimal socialization, to flash up and start to air snap and start looking for targets on Roscoe to bite, uh, that's when I stopped the game. I'm like, oh, okay, we don't need to escalate this any further. Uh, so. so it's definitely, we can see that that scenario of um, Roscoe mouthing you is something that is affecting her, but not in the way that people are no, interpreting it. Not, she's not going to then turn around and go, oh yeah, okay, let's just bite you. <laughs> you know, she's not going to turn on me. This is what makes these guys so good, is they are fiercely protective of their owners. So, you know, she, she's definitely not going to just jump ship from me to Roscoe. I'm the one earning the respect with her. I'm the one earning the relationship. And uh, as far as Roscoe's concerned, you know, she eventually will start to make friends in the group, but I'm always gonna outrank everyone. Just like I outrank Roscoe in everyone else's eyes. Uh, I outrank all the dogs. And so therefore, that's why they all respond to me. Even though Roscoe does like to be a bit of an enforcer, and settle the dogs down that are being a bit out of line. So they also respect his 
strength and, and um, power, but I always outrank them. So for her to jump ship would just not be a thing. She, it, it's not going to happen. Now, that's in this situation with me. If the scenario is like the example we gave before where the new owner isn't giving the information to her that she needs and she starts looking for it from someone else, she will definitely gravitate towards Roscoe. Absolutely. And then in that case, where you don't have the relationship, whether you don't have that loyalty, Roscoe has the loyalty, then when he starts doing that, look out, because she's gonna come in hard and back him up. So that's where that possibility uh, could arise. And that's why these guys in the wrong owners or inexperienced owners do land themselves in a bit of trouble because it's a full-time job. Even though the formal training is relatively uh, short-lived, it's a full-time job, constantly giving information all day, every day, uh, and she's absorbing it like a sponge. Hello. So, I spoke about it on one of the other training, um, one of the training videos we did, and I was like, I couldn't figure out how or why she just kept breaking before I gave her the free, and she was doing it pretty consistently, and then I started thinking, okay, she's anticipating it, but she's not anticipating it, and this is what makes these guys one, so impressive, but two, so difficult if you don't know what you're doing. So she's not anticipating at all. She is hyper alert to my body language and uh, what I'm about to do. She's just reading it and understanding what I'm gonna do before I consciously make that decision to do it. So I even tested her out there and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna step away from you here because if you're anticipating, you're gonna go with me. She sat there perfectly and then um, you know, I was still half decided, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna set her free here. And then before I even thought I was making a movement, she's read that and gone, yep, we're going free. So this is why these guys are fantastic. They are just, you know, I, I, I have tried to hide it a little bit because I don't wanna to seem too enthusiastic, but I am so excited to train this girl. I've really wanted to work with these guys for quite a while. Uh, I know what I'm up against, but I am still floored by how intelligent and super alert and uh, just how calculating they are. And so she is just feeding off my body language, reading exactly what I'm gonna do and then just doing it before I consciously make that decision or, or as I make the decision, but before I physically say the words. So that kind of intelligence and hyper uh, sensitivity to reading body language and putting it all together. And we're not talking about a dog that you've lived with for however no, long that's reading. Talking, a, talking about a dog that's known me for two days and one morning. <laughs> yeah. You know, like imagine it's... what that's gonna be after 18 months. Like yeah. if you are not constantly on top of this dog and giving the right information and training the correct way, Every they, single they day. They are just going to make life a living hell for you. Like this is this is something that for me as a trainer, and you know, this is what I do all day. I'm gonna be with the dogs all day. I'm gonna give them everything they need. I'm excited about to see where it can go. For someone who goes to work, leaves them at home for eight hours a day, maybe has a dog walker, you know, has all these other experiences that are not you, and you know, 
Oh, I can just see how badly it can go wrong with these guys. And so, although, and this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to seem too excited about the fact that we have got one of these guys here to train and work with. I know for a trainer, they're going to be very, very high performing and be very rewarding. But I also know that the speed at which she's picking these exercises up is far too um, advanced for any average or first time owner because they're going to make more mistakes. If I relate it back to when I used to train people how to train their dog, used to do house calls, one-on-one -on -one training visits, the first 20 minutes would just be to get the owner to have the right technique and the owner would be messing it up and the owner and that's what it's all about is them getting used to the language when to use it when to say no when to use the lead and so i'm constantly correcting the owner's technique just so that when i leave there after the first hour and a half the practice that they do once i'm gone is correct so the technique is perfect by the end of that one and a half hour lesson uh, for her to be picking it up so quickly she's going to spend an hour and 20 minutes sitting there going you have no idea what you're doing you know looking up at their owner and just assessing you don't have control here and then they'll start switching off they'll start losing respect they think i, I need someone who knows what they're doing to be in charge of me you know i, I need to find a, a a better instructor or whatever it may be so although i'm getting the positive results it's because i'm also hypercritical and analytic and just making sure I'm interpreting everything she's doing and giving her uh, the answer to that interpretation. And it's working well. You know, we're gelling very quickly and we're feeding off each other. But someone who's not doing that, it's just gonna end in tears. And these guys are not a very forgiving breed at all. So unless you are giving them exactly what they need, like I know, I know people talk about these, um, stories about coming home and their couch is in a thousand pieces of fluff. Uh, you know, these guys are known to just be bored one morning and then you go outside and they've got a eight foot hole in the backyard. We're not talking about just a normal dig and you step in and go, oh, there's a hole there. We're talking about a huge mound of hole. And they just come out and go, yeah, I was bored, so I dug a hole. Yeah. Because they're a busy dog. Yeah. They do not like to sit on the couch on a Sunday morning and do nothing. Yeah, and be left for 10, 12 hours a day. They will find um, a job to do themselves. Yeah. And if so, they decide that, I think there might be a squeaky toy under this couch. <laughs> I'm going to chew through it. I think, I yeah. think there could be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, nah, there's not. <laughs> yeah, but there's all this other fun stuff in here. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, wanna, I just wanted to express that um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of enjoyment out of how intelligent and how fast she's picking these things up. But I also see this as a double-edged uh, sword here. and You it, can see the other side uh, of it. I can see how someone who isn't just full-time, everything they've got into these guys, oh, it's, it's, it's not a good pairing, you know. That's why these guys are so good as full-time working dogs, whether it be police dogs, military dogs. You are always with them. You, you hardly ever uh, have them, uh, you know, locked away or anything like that. They're always out, they're always training and on patrol, whatever it might be. So without that kind of workload, they, make, they will make life difficult. These, these are not a dog that I would say, hey, yeah, these are cool, go and get these guys. I highly recommend against getting this kind of breed unless you are a professional in the industry or you, have yeah. years of experience yeah. like owning a previous um dog of this breed it is it is quite intense the way that they play they are they are a serious dog they're all about business that's why they want to work 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 when they play they play just as hard um you know i i straight away thought okay you know i'm dealing this is what i'm dealing with Ooh, missed it. so i just wanted to point out there are Although I'm getting excited about how impressive she is, there are a lot of other sides of the story that these guys are way too much dog for most people to handle. And so I just wanted, I didn't want anyone out there going, yeah, cool. I all of a sudden love these dogs who want to go get one. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm, I'm trying to, to bring everyone's attention to the fact that these guys 
Yeah. We, we can sense a big sense of responsibility mm. with a dog like this and portraying her as um, it looking easy. Yeah. Um, there's been a few random comments, you know, from people, um, you know, just, you, you know, understandably perceiving so how, okay. it as... You know, they're obviously they haven't seen a training session. So yeah. those those members that are in the training academy, they will have seen um, the training session and seen how much work has to go into getting her to that point on that first day. Mm. But even then, she's such a high performing dog that she get, picks quick. it up so quickly. So even then, it's quite impressive, yeah. um, despite the amount of work that's put in to get her to that point. Um, so rem just remembering that this dog got home to a family that had owned this breed before. And within the short period of six or seven weeks, they've got completely fed up with her, can't handle her and sent her back. This is an experienced owner with this breed who can't handle this four month old puppy. So what what hope does anyone else out there have as a first time dog owner? You know, it, it is just the wrong dog for, uh, the majority of people yeah you know, i'm sorry to say but that that is that is accurate yeah you know, really most unique people shouldn't have these guys there's going to be moments where people are going to see her intelligence as um she's the easiest dog ever you know what yeah. i mean like that's how okay. they're going to perceive I'm, it okay i'll tell you let me give you an analogy and um i i do sometimes go a bit haywire with these analogies but let's say let's say your life was a task and the task was chopping an onion you're gonna get a little knife and chop that onion. You get one of these dogs, it's like chopping an onion with a samurai sword. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna chop that onion really easily, but what are you gonna do with the rest of that blade? You know, this is what these guys are. It is overkill for most people. Yeah. You do not need that kind of weaponry just to chop an onion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I know that there was a big, um, there was quite a big media hype when that movie, The Dog, came out with that Channing Tatum. Um, so it's a movie about a Malinois um, who loses um, their owner, you know, in battle at oh, yeah. war. Um, and then his mate or brother, sorry everyone, I can't remember, but comes to get the dog. Um, so I'm assuming it doesn't go that well at the beginning? No, but it's not really about the storyline. It's about the fact that... Um, all these trainers and experienced people with Malinois, um, military handlers, they all came out um, and spoke up uh, and it was all the same message. Please do not oh, go yeah. out and get one of these dogs after seeing this movie. Yeah, sure. Please don't think that, oh, that's impressive. Yeah, I want one of those. Yeah. So, um, and they're saying it for very good reason yeah. you know and so I just felt too like I was talking to Luke about it and he was like yeah I see that and there's going to be some moments where oh chancy boy you can do your big love bug there is going to be moments where she's going to make everything look easy yeah you know um but she makes it look easy but um... and impressive and maybe some people are going to think I want one of those no but you just remember, and I used to say this to people all the time whenever I'd train them, it's all, it's, it's very difficult to, for someone who's not a professional trainer to, to come in and just all of a sudden get that kind of respect from the dog very quickly. You know, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of um, experience to do that. So I do make these things look easy because I do it all the time. I've done it for over the last decade and you know I'm, I'm reading the dogs accurately. Now, I, one of the things I always say to people when they're having trouble with their dog, I say, okay, cool, let me, let me just work the dog for two minutes and then I'll get this dog past this issue because what's happening is the owner is working with a timing issue, they're not doing it properly, the dog's starting to lose interest and starting to lose respect for what they're doing. And they might've been struggling with this dog for you know 10 or 15 minutes trying to get it to do a simple exercise. 
Um, I quickly take the lead, sort it out in 45 seconds, and then ask them to just concentrate on what they're doing. So it makes it easier for them to think about what they're doing. So one of the biggest things I say to them is, you know, don't don't take offence or, or don't get jealous about it, but I do make this look very easy. I've done it a thousand times before. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, just concentrate on your technique. Don't worry about the performance of the dog. But it's your so, job, like you know, just like anyone you, whose job it is. Yeah. You, um, you want to be good at what you're doing. They're going to make um, what they do look easy to someone exactly. like you who doesn't know. So you don't, know. don't interpret, you know, the fact that, and and that's why I don't want to be too excited about. Gee, look how awesome she is. Because <laughs> you know? inside I'm like, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, but I know the moment I just go. Okay, switching off, okay, yeah. turn around, she's off, tearing down something. <laughs> you know, like it's constant work. Yeah. Um, but I, this is what I do all day. I've got 20 something dogs here and I'm constantly feeding information, I'm constantly assessing them all. So it's what I do naturally all day, every day. There's no switching off. You go inside at night and you have a cup of tea and there's one of the dogs that might be starting to notice the cat a little bit too much. You're like, ah, settle down, we don't chase the cat inside. Oh, okay, no worries. Then there's another dog that all of a sudden just wakes up and starts looking around. Okay, let's need to start going to the toilet. Yep, let's go out to the toilet. Yeah, you know, you're hypersensitive and hyper alert to all their body language and mannerisms and everything they're doing. So I'm doing that same thing with her all day, every day. There's no, okay, training's finished, let's go. Like there are dogs definitely, like Maggie, you do some training with her. She goes, oh yeah, is that what you want me to do? Okay, no worries. You take that lead off. That's it. She just goes into play mode, just no issue, no concern in the world, and you forget about it for, you know, however long till you do the next training session. Totally different mentality, totally different dog. Her? Definitely not the case. She, you, you think it's training time's finished? Okay, oh yeah, training time's finished. She's like, uh-uh, we're going. You know, and she's like, more, 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 give me more, give me more. If I don't give it to her, you're going to look for it somewhere else and then that's when you're going to get the problem so she's keeping me on my toes that's the other side of it that you don't really see but i am very excited about working with her <laughs> she's, she's showing a lot of cool traits for someone like myself who is in this industry working with this many dogs having the space to do what we need to do to keep these guys entertained satisfied content stimulated uh, on path and, guided yeah, you know exactly so, let's keep walking. I kind of got distracted there. I was just gonna, I was about to let her off lead and she decided that she didn't want to perform as highly. So that's why I went into straight away another little exercise. Cause I'm not gonna let her off lead while she's showing any resistance like that. What are you guys? Let's go. He's actually doing quite well. Yeah. You know, he's very happy. He's a lot more engaged, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did start to, when I first had him here, I did worry at how aloof he was and how much he wanted to just chase birds and run around, that it's not a very desirable trait as a companion. Mm. But it seems like he's got it out of his system now and now he can relax. Like he must have had this pent up stress and anxiety and now he's starting to relax a bit more and he's actually, he is keen to have that relationship mm. and, to, and to connect, which is really positive because then it makes him a lot more adoptable now. Yes. You know? Yeah. When and he, it does make sense, that. doesn't it? Like um, if he has been like um, caged or, pe you know, penned in yeah. to a small... Yeah. As, a, as an intelligent working dog. Yeah. That he just wanted to get it all out of his yeah, system. get it out of his system, run it out, and then he's like, okay, I can be a dog now. Yeah. Which is great. It is. It's a, it's a good sign. You know. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, buddy.
like a driver. Got Look a bowl at his feet, sticking his mouth. <laughs> Joey. Good. Good deal. I love this grass now. Mm -hmm. I love that it's taken off, this area. It used to be so barren. This is our front garden that we ripped up and put up here. It's all grown back. got a big chest, has <laughs> Settle down, Rover, we're coming, mate. <laughs> Plenty of room on the waist belt, mate. Like the Greek Adonis. <laughs> Audio Roscoe, are you ready to become a star, mate? <laughs> what are you talking about? I've been a star my whole life. <laughs> Fred, Good job, buddy. Ready, Ready Roscoe! Ready, Tried to eat the GoPro. Yeah, they do that. He tried to eat. Uh, watch out for me! 
fish toilets! Oh. Hello darling. You got caught up there, did you? There you go. There you go, on.
would have got it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. No beautiful boy. No beautiful boy. Yes. She does. I just have to hope for the best when I grab her with those claws and those big dangly legs. Good job, well done. Good girl, well done, darling. Good girl, well done. Good job, well done. Woohoo! Good girl, good girl, yeah, yeah. Hello, banjo boy. Oh, mate. When's the last time you've been for a swim, banjo? Let's do it now. <laughs> He's a really good swimmer, but he just doesn't get in that much. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Good boy, mate. Well done. Good job. Good job. How about you, Shadow? Oh, Shadow girl. Good boy, darling. Oh, Shadow. Good girl. Good girl, Shadow. Well done, darling. There you go.
Which one? The front gate. Good job. Good job. Well done. Yeah, it's a really positive trait to have as a working dog. Like she's never been in the water before, was fearful of it yesterday, and now is almost jumping into me just to get to me. So you can think about these guys in a critical situation, in a you know, riot on the street for police or in a war zone. They just wanna get to their owner no matter what. You know, they they really are uh, very impressive dogs. Like, she, look, look, look. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, darling. Chit what what four month old? Kitty Pie has similar um, qualities, I feel. She does, actually. Kitty Pie. You know, <laughs> some, some people call her Killer Cutie. <laughs> she, she comes in when I go in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> but this early, like, this is her second day, she's four months old. Oh, good girl, Dad. Yeah. Good girl. She did the same. Wait till we get her onto duck jumping. And she's really impressive. Oh, oh, oh goodness. Oh, almost oh. found the edge there. Right, oh, I just oh. opened the gate. Oh, she's in. She's in, Luke. Hello, darling. Good job. There we go. Good girl. <laughs> getting all the attention. <laughs> I'm the old pup. Good boy, mate. Good boy, mate. Yeah, good boy. You smell like gingerbread, man. <laughs> hey. So that's because I got the Christmas spice yeah, cologne got the from Christmas, Maxine. The Christmas special. Oh, good boy, mate. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Well done, buddy. Good boy. Look at that. She's hilarious. Isn't she? Abra. Abra. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. 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 Come on, Abra. Come on, Abra. Good girl. Well done. I'm back. That's it. Good girl. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Step up. Good girl, darling. Oh, she's in. See how easy this is to do when she's fully grown. <laughs> Be like Roscoe trying to get on it. <laughs> there you go, darling. Good job. Good job. Oh, good. Good job. Nope. Just wants to hang out with me. Good boy, Freddo. Good job, mate. Going for a leisurely swim. Are you going to come in? Jeez. Good girl. Good girl, darling. You're such a... Yeah. Oh, she's eating it.
Good girl. Cutie pies. Are you gonna come in for me? Cutie. Come on, cutie. Come on, cutie. Yeah, cutie. You're so clever. You're so clever. You're the cleverest little froggy boo. You're the cleverest little froggy boo. Good girl, cutie five. What a good girl you are. Okay, but let's go. Come on, darling. Yeah, oh, let's go. Good, good job. Girl. <laughs> good girl, darling. That was well quick. Done. Wasn't it? <laughs> good girl. Good girl. Let's see. Let me Ready? just get on this side, hang on. You ready? You ready? Okay, come on, let's go! <laughs> Good job! Then she's off. <laughs> Except she just bites the water. <laughs> Good girl, Dad. Good girl. They're fearless, aren't they? Yeah. Good girl. Okay, let's go! <laughs> Look at that. That's so funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, you, you wouldn't want to be um, drowning at this oh, point no, because no. she's not going to come save you there. Yeah, she's, she's no Zara the Labrador. No. <laughs> she's not going to come rescue me. Uh, good girl. That kind of progress is just so rare. Yeah. You can see how they're the perfect breed for like Good girl. just going into a bomb, like a war yeah. zone without oh, hesitation. Yeah. yeah. We won't be able to keep her out now. <laughs> Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You know there's a ramp over here too. Oh, there's Cutie Pie. She's like, let me show you how it's done. Let me show you how it's done. Cutie is a pro. Look at you, Cutie. Okay, this is how you get out. Down this way. Beautiful girl. Hello, beautiful little girl. 
Oh, oh. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Good girl. Oh. Uh, let, let's try the... Oh. Look at that vibe. No. One of the shepherds? <laughs> they don't really swim, though. Oh, they don't swim. Yeah. Who do you... You need the shepherds today? Then, then, then we do Joey. Um, Joey or Tilly. I've never seen a, a dog commit to the water so quickly. Like that water's always a big one. When when they're obviously it's when, new and fearful. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, when for it's them. a new thing, they're it, they're unsure, and then all of a sudden. I think I'm I trying. Like it, I'm so. trying to think of a dog. To come towards you like this because she's like, oh, look how cute I am. Yeah. I'm come towards you like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, cutie. Good girl, cutie pie. Good girl, cutesy. She's like, I can do that game too, watch. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl, cutie pie. Got his eyes on that frisbee. Come here, mate. Oh, Tilly. Oh, good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Mr. Roscoe. It's not your frisbee, mate. Oh, damn it. Take that out. It's not your frisbee. I'm going to go that young case the dog's jumping at you. going to be booked in first thing Monday. <laughs> For a nail <laughs> These claws are crazy. Good girl. Look at that. Hello darling. Good girl. Good girl. You, you would have got a really good shot before with that GoPro with them jumping off the dock. 
with the with the yeah. stick. Yeah, yeah, these things are usually great. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I do that, it's awesome. I saw them because they jumped right at you. It was good. Now I've got three of them. Yeah, and it just gives you like infinite possibilities. Yeah. Like water track. Yeah. It has auto tracking, so like select this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a perfect example of why these guys are not the time of a dog to sit at home for 10 hours while you go to work. <coughs> like, look at the drive they have just to be next to you. You know, just to just to be beside you, be with you the whole time. That's all they want to do. And so this here, yeah, okay, we're just having a swim session, but how much stimulation, uh, how much of a challenge, how much uh, development is she going through just from experiencing this and you know how much more is she gonna progress <laughs> like it's unbelievable we're getting man down some frisbee oh dear and so when we were talking before i was um you mentioned something and i meant to say that when I go out and do a training session with someone, you might do it for an hour and a half, two hours. But with these guys, because they're so thirsty for information and they want to learn and they're absorbing everything, just hanging out with them and daily interactions would probably count for about five or six hours worth of private sessions. You know what I mean? Like they are just progressing that much, that much faster because they just don't switch off. They don't want to... Um, ever just take a break and relax like they're always on the go uh, I, I often see always see you know when you go to a public dog park someone goes to the park but they're really not there to hang out with their dog they sit down on the park bench they check their phone the dog just goes off and get be um, you know is social by themselves that is not these guys these guys will go to the park you sit down on the bench I'll just sit down and look at you what are we doing? So yesterday, um, maybe you can comment on this because uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the video. I'm, I may put these two videos together the two days. Yep. Um, but she was between your legs when you were doing the lure pole on the uh, dock. Yep. Yep. Um, and as the dogs were running past, she was lunging out, nipping them, yeah. lunging out to to nip them yeah and um it's pretty obvious that she's in that um protective position yeah you know i'm sure everyone if they saw it that they would think oh gee that that is what it is isn't it you know it looks so obvious but it made me think like right there can you imagine uh, taking a dog like that to the dog park oh. you know yeah. no it's it's not there not their jam yeah you know? they want to go to a private beach just you and them yeah they don't care about going or even to... taking it to a cafe yeah you know imagine well taking them to a cafe would be easy you know they're very high pulling dogs they'll do it yes. standing on their head yeah but it's not what they want mm. you know they don't it doesn't look like um you know they're going to want to share you with the rest of the dog park or the rest of your friends at the cafe having a morning brunch um, you know, even when Banjo came down, he's like, yeah, give me some of that love. She's sitting right there, barking at me, going, hey, 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 that me? <laughs> we spent all morning together. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah, that's me. Um, righty -o. So. Hi. Hi. Ooh, you want to you wanna come in with me? Hi. <laughs> Sure does. Good girl. Good girl, hi.
Just sleep chewing. What is it, Judy? What are you trying to tell us? Thank you. 